Welcome to Keepers, the only fantasy football show you're watching right now. I'm Matt Ufford and I'm here to help you get through the 2013 season, starting with this here fantasy draft special. Let's get right into things with the trading block. Now ordinarily I don't recommend making trades before week four of the season, but if you already did your fantasy draft, here are some undervalued players you should target, as well as the guys you should be looking to unload. Buy low on Larry Fitzgerald. He's been going in the third round after just one awful year where he had the worst quarterback play in the NFL. And when I say the worst QBs in the NFL, I mean worse than the Chiefs. Think about that. Matt Castle and Brady Quinn were better than the crippled zoo animals throwing to Fitty last year. He's gonna have a great year with Carson Palmer. Sell high on Colin Kaepernick. In seven starts last season, Cap had exactly one game with more than 20 fantasy points. Now he's a great guy to lead your real world franchise, but the Niners simply don't need him to pass enough to make an impact in the fantasy world. He's not worth the 50th pick when Matt Stafford will be available just a few picks later. Buy low on Eagles, all Eagles. The Chip Kelly effect is real and you should buy into it. Deshaun Jackson will outperform his ranking as the 26th receiver off the board. LaShawn McCoy will be a top three running back. And I even like Michael Vick as a second quarterback and Bryce Brown despite the fumbles. Sell high on Robert Griffin III. Now don't get me wrong, few players have the innate talent of RG3, but the reality is that he's a huge injury risk and his draft mates Russell Wilson and Andrew Luck have similar ADPs and appear to be more resistant to knee trauma. Hell, Tony Romo is available a full round after RG3 and he finished just a hair behind Peyton Manning in fantasy points per game in 2012. I'm just saying, there are safer options than RG3. Buy low on Dwayne Bowe. Now he's not gonna produce the 15 touchdowns he got in 2010, but he'll bounce back into form with Alex Smith. With an ADP of 44, I'd happily take him in the fourth round over Marcus Colston. Buy low on Jordan Cameron. The Browns youngster is getting hyped in fantasy circles, little to the point of being overrated, but even with an ADP of 117, I still like his value better than, say, Antonio Gates at 92. Oh, poor Antonio Gates. I wish your feet would stop breaking. I'm not like those other fantasy experts who just give bad advice with no accountability. Every week in the Reality Check, I'll review what I got right and wrong the previous week. And since this is the start of a new season, here's a quick review of last year's predictions. Sell high on Steven Jackson. Get rid of him now before the wheels fall off. Sell high on Rob Gronkowski. Gronk is still an amazing tight end and I'm still marveling at his incredible 2011. But you can't expect him to have a record-breaking season every year. Sell high on Michael Vick. You'll be lucky if Vick starts 12 games. Buy low on Peyton Manning. The Broncos have excellent wideouts, a solid tight end, and great offensive line, and an all-time great who's looked more like his old self as the preseason's gone on. Mmm! I had no idea I was that good. How are you getting this for free? Uh, side note, please do not comb through last year's videos for mistakes. That's disrespectful. No one wants to live in the past. Now I know it seems weird to be adding and dropping guys before the first game, but these are the regular season segments and we're not gonna shell out for new graphics. So, when I say hire and fire, what I really mean is draft and don't draft. Cool? Okay. Hire DeAndre Hopkins and fire Cordero Patterson. Hopkins has the speed and ability to fill the long vacant spot across from Andre Johnson. Patterson's skill set lacks refinement, and that's not the sort of thing you wanna say about a guy whose quarterback is Christian Ponder. He sucks. Hire Danny Amendola. The knock on Amendola is his injury history, but I think you have to take the chance on a guy who's a lock for 100 catches if he stays healthy. Worth the risk in PPR leagues. Fire Steven Jackson. Oh, really? You wanna draft a 30-year-old running back with the 17th pick? Listen, Jackson might have a great year in an excellent offense. I'm not writing him off, but I think there's a lot better value to be had in the middle of the second round. Why get an old running back when you can have Drew Brees or AJ Green or Jimmy Graham in that spot? Save your risk taking for the later rounds. Hire Alshon Jeffrey. With an ADP of 134, he's got great potential for a breakout season as the number two behind Brandon Marshall. He and the Cardinals Michael Floyd are in similar situations and I like the upside for both of them. Fire Richard Mendenhall. Oh, you want an ineffective and injury prone running back that plays six games against the Niners, Seahawks and Rams? Come on, don't, don't do that to yourself. You deserve better. Hire Giovanni Bernard and fire Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. The rookie has looked so good in the preseason that it's obvious the law firm will soon be disbarred or at the very least share touches with a new partner. I think Bernard is maybe a bit overrated at this point, but his impact on the Bengals offense and Green Ellis' touches is real. 
Fire Tavon Austin, by which I mean let someone else reach for him. Right now he's got an ADP of 80-ish, but you know someone in your league will reach to get him early in the seventh round or even in the sixth. Let them. There are better value plays at wide receiver, like the aforementioned Michael Floyd and Elshon Jeffrey after the 100th pick. Hire Reggie Bush. I've seen some talk of Matt Forte catching 80 passes and gaining 2,000 all-purpose yards in Mark Trestman's offense. But if you can't draft Forte in your PPR league, pick up Bush a round or two later for better value. He's going to be a nice security blanket for Matt Stafford. That's it for the Fantasy Draft episode of Keepers. I'm going to be back every Thursday of this season with all the fantasy advice you need and probably some that you don't. Good luck, and please, don't draft any Raiders. You deserve better.